fifth, and now Kenseth is in 20th place, Dick. Kenseth's problem, Mike, is a lot. Yeah, the 09 just hit the wall, man. Kenseth, like a lot of other people we're listening to, has a very tight race car. This is the opportunity they will need to adjust it and loosen it up. We've got a caution flag. Well, it's the first one of the night. Unlike last night, we get 63 laps under our belt before the first caution flag. Now, that looks like a right front tire problem. One thing we want to watch here tonight is the rotors glowing on these cars. And why we want to watch that is not so much the glowing rotor, but what it's doing to the tire. And you can see there, the tire goes down. The 09, Johnny Sauter, into the fence. Uh, that built so much heat in that right front tire, it's easy to blow it out. You just see it went straight in the wall, and Darrell, that car was going backwards. You almost could say maybe also the car maybe had a, a hard push to it. The front end was sliding. That magnifies the problem. This, this caution will benefit a lot of people, but who it's really going to benefit is Jimmy Johnson, our points leader, who was about to go a lap down. Steve. Uh oh, got a car around on the back straightaway. Looks like Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson in the inside wall. And that all started yeah, because right, of Sterling right, Marlin and Michael Walton. The next Dell Cup point leader, Jimmy Johnson, came in here 127 ahead of Jeff Gordon, and now he has spun into the fence. What happened back there is uh, Sterling Marlin got up high coming off a of two. Michael run up on him, and he had to check up. Somebody else checked up and ran into the back of uh, Jimmy Johnson. See right here, the 07, he pushes Sterling up the hill. Sterling has to woe up. Here comes Michael. He has to woe up. The 77 was down underneath uh, Jimmy Johnson and just got into him, spun around. Let's see how hard he hits. Pretty darn hard. A lot of damage to that right front. Yep. Looked like that 77 got that wiggle off the corner like we've seen so many times here this weekend. Just moved up a little bit right into the left rear of the 48 car. See, you see that it's an opportunity. Three guys are up the hill and they're slowing down. Oh, my gosh, he's wrecked again. Looks like... He's lost the steering to the car. He can't turn it, so he can't drive it to pit road. That, look, I, he hit that inside wall again. Look at those black marks. Here he comes. This looked like something on the steering broke. You can see the right front turn dead in. You can see it right there. He was running at a pretty high rate of speed, trying to stay on the lead lap. Guys, look at it from that angle. To me, it looked like almost like the tie rod in itself broke. And Daryl, you know what? Harder to stay. Oh, round goes somebody over there. Turn two, and it is Scott Riggs. Caution is out. Third caution of the night, and it comes at lap 126. Scott Wimmer will get the free pass as Scott Riggs. I don't think he hit anything. Uh, he got a poke, I think. And, and uh, let me correct, I, I inadvertently moved I-80 Speedway to Missouri. Schrader will be in Nebraska tomorrow at Nebraska Raceway Park. Gets down in here, and hello. We got a little help. Is that Kyle that got That was definitely the 45 car, Kyle Petty. Yeah. Active driver at this track. Jeff Gordon's had a lot of success, and Rusty goes around. And I'm going to tell you, if Michael Walton, how he avoided him. Looked like Jeff, Jeff Gordon, Gordon, maybe in the 24, he all the, but got up in the wall. No, he didn't hit the wall. He just almost did. Fish that looks like, but yeah. kind of like a muskie or a walleye or a, you know one of those. But anyway, I bet the 18 and the two get together because they've been racing hard. And around goes Wallace. Well, what this did do, it pretty much brought about 30 of our 31 lead lap cars to pit road. Kyle Petty in the 45. I don't know who's pushing the issue, trying to push the issue. Whoa, Stewart around. Down. 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 He gets away, and there is no other contact. But Tony Stewart, the leader, was trying to work the double wide lap, almost lap traffic of Scott Wimmer and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Stewart goes around. Yeah, I'm surprised this has not happened before now because these guys have been all over the place trying to get by these lap cars. And uh, the lap cars running side by side doesn't give them a lot of options. Somehow, someway, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Budweiser, the eight car, stayed on the lead lap. What a break for him. 
despite the spin you've got to admire Stewart's car control and ending that spin facing the right way. He just, uh, he just gassed her up a little too early and around the back end came and that can happen to you real easily in that turn especially with a tight car. How about it Steve. Yeah Kurt Busch is a little tight DW they're going to do. A Caution flag number eight is waved at Richmond. Hermie Sadler's engine appeared to grenade down in turn one. Mike Bliss got in the oil, spun up and slapped the wall hard with the left side. But the safer barriers did their job, and Mike is able to climb out unhurt in a crash that was eerily similar to Jerry Nadeau's. See Hermie there in the 66 car. He blows the engine, puts some fluid down. There goes Tony and the leader right by. Very reminiscent of what happened to Casey Kane at Dover last year when an engine blew and he got in the oil. Even with a safer barrier, that was at the point. Oh, got a wreck here off two. Three cars. Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace. Caution is out. Robbie Gordon. Yellow flag. Number nine. And you know what? These leaders, they're going to have to be careful on this front stretch. There could be a lot of debris on this front stretch. You don't want to run over anything. Jarrett's car is junk. Everybody else drove away. We should mention on that last caution flag, six lead lap cars pitted. Bobby Labonte out of 10th place, Jeremy Mayfield, Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, and Jeff Burton. They all have fresh tires. And let's add to the lead lap, Kurt Busch. He gets the free pass. And I'm sure what Kurt Busch will do, he will come to pit road. He will get four fresh tires because this next restart will be a single file restart with lead lap cars only to the front of the pack. Turn four. Saw Robbie Gordon in the seven car down on the bottom of the racetrack. Dale Jarrett in the 88. They just came together on the exit of the corner. But Robbie, Robbie got his left wheel only flat on the apron and shot him up into Dale Jarrett. It had not been Dale Jarrett's night. He was running in 30th, two laps down, but now his car sits on pit road as the field. He back straight yes. away. In lap traffic, a car has been spun Tony around. Stewart. That's Tony Stewart in a 33 and car. Larry, it all happened because of the chain reaction. Somebody up there had to get out of the throttle, and here they all come and piled in. Brandon Miller got backed up coming out of turn number two, and the accordion. Just bring it to pit road if you can. If not, don't worry about it. Well, Tony's climbing out. The accordion like. Circumstances we saw at Bristol and Martinsville happens on the fast track. Hey, they're coming to help you right there. It's all good, guys. We're done here. We're going to go to the garage and see if we can fix it. Now there's Miller in the 21. The 21 drifts up in front of Tony. Tony gets into the back of him, and then Tony gets run into from behind. That may have been Reed Sorensen that got into the back of Tony. I can't tell for sure. We'll have to get another look at it. But I think it definitely started with the, the orange 21 car, Brandon Miller. Yeah, see, Tony had to lift, and when he did, that, I can't tell. No, that's not, that's, is that John Wood? Couldn't tell who that no, was. It's Stanton who, Barrett, no. I believe, who it was, was the 36 car, who was actually a lap down as well. That got into the back of Tony. Yeah. Well, I'll be able to tell real well right Coming here. outside. All right. Clear inside, inside. Darrell, you can hear it right there. Brandon Come Miller on, had to get out of the throttle late exit of turn two. Matt? And Mark Martin, the first of the leaders to hit his pit box there. Brandon Miller hit the wall in the quad oval just before the start finish Got line tire, Rob. and he continues not sure how damaged he is uh, he's uh, I'm, I'm telling you he's kind of a roadblock he's not gonna hold be able to get there. the pit road this time he's got to make another lap yeah he should have woke her up back there in the middle of the corner and waited for everybody to get by he's got quite a bit of damage to the right rear got a little bit of a tire rub there entering the corner as well here's what happened Coming off turn four, watch the orange car, Miller. He just he got real loose, Daryl. Yeah, people have been getting up behind him. Uh, you know, he was involved in that wreck over there with Tony Stewart. They've been getting up behind him. Looks like it really loosens him up when they do. The wall actually straightens him out. 
didn't for the number of leaders in this race as Justin Labonte has pounded the wall. Coming up across the line. Come on. That'll be a big break for David Green, who was just passed by the leader to go a lap down again just a few laps ago. He will get the free pass in the 27 car. That'll put 19 cars back on the lead lap. And Michael just can't catch a break. He was in line to get the free pass, and uh, they just lapped David Green. Now he gets it. It's been a tough day for Labonte since having his best Bush Series qualifying effort ever and starting fourth. He's alongside uh, Jerry Robertson here. I think that car just hadn't been that comfortable for Justin all day. He's been struggling a good bit. Around she goes. Boy, Brent Sherman just snuck through there on the outside. I think that might that car might be one of those cars, Larry, that qualified really well, but just didn't have the right setup for the race. Road. He's no different than any other young athlete. When they come up and sometimes whoa. they just, whoa, goodness. Jeffrey Bodine. Around he goes. And the gun broke down. Caution is out. Caution is out. That'll be a big break for Denny Hamlin in the 20 car. He will get the free pass. J.J. Yaley's teammate. You guys, have four tires ready. 54 laps to go. Cars hurt pretty badly. God, I can't turn it around. Looks like he got up into the 78 car of Jerry Robertson. Yeah, he just was. Turning in, turning wheel in, putting wheel into it, wheel into it, uh, Jeffrey was, and the thing finally snapped around when he made a little contact there. Happens right in front of uh, Randy LaJoy. Not a real, real hard lick, but uh, enough that uh, that's going to send that car to the garage area, I think. But Darrell, I think the race. Oh, he trouble has turn two around the Jaylee. Keep your your line. Lucky more cars were not involved in that coming off turn two. Good that that car stayed up high for most of the pack to get by and for the rest of the pack to get slowed down. Back in. And uh, the free pass car will not be Michael Waltrip again. <laughs> he was Come second on. line. Johnny Sauter, the one car, will be back on the lead lap. So now we have 20 cars on the Flat. lead lap. Always a bridesmaid. <laughs> he's he's going to be hot. <laughs> he did about five shots at it, misses it by one. But that's a shame. We've been talking about J.J. this entire race. Started at the back of the field. He moved up Whoa. to the top 10 and uh, just has trouble over there off turn two. Top of your screen. There we go. Just jumped out of there. Back it down. Get low. Down, down, down. Good job. That was Stacy Compton. This is Kenny Wallace. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down all the way to the bottom. You're clear. You're clear. Good job. Caution's out. Good definitive angle that that did it do it on its own or did maybe he get a little help we just really can't tell the high side because he's been <laughs> running that white line through both ends Shane Meal three wide and there's contact there Blake Beast goes around in the five the 25 collected of Ashton Lewis and more I don't think you're gonna be happy about it Michael Waltrip in the 99 car finally gets the free pass. It is the seventh caution flag of the day. Coming off a restart and a big disparity in getting up to speed between some of the lap cars and some of the lead lap cars. Things got real close together midway down the back stretch. For this group, uh, they lost a car with the uh, Kyle Busch qualifying now they've lost this car one of the another of the Hendrick cars 
And Ashton Lewis, who led earlier, he's got big damage both sides. Had a great run at Bristol and uh, sixth in the points coming into Texas. Blake Feast uh, has told the rescue workers he is okay, handed his helmet out the window, and in a second, he'll climb out. This happened mid-pack, well back of the leaders. Shane Meals got a big run. It looked like, did he brush the wall? He, bounced, the he wall? bounced off the wall, uh, off the off the turn two there, got into Ashton Lewis, and boy, that five car came within an ace of going over. But definitely Shane Mill in the 32 got up against that outside wall. We've seen that a lot in this race, and when he bounced off the wall, he got into the right rear quarter panel of the 25 car, uh, Ashton Lewis. Here he comes. He's got a good run on the outside. We've seen that. No harm, no foul here. He gets into oh. the wall, and when he bounces off, uh, nothing he could do about it. Uh, it just bounced off and got into Lewis. And then Blake Feast in the five car was just a victim. Wrong place, wrong time. Well, let's ride along with Shane Meal. You could tell that he, he knew he was in trouble. He paneled it, but uh, it was too late. Caution. So Shane Hard cars is around. Here, the eight car. He's, He's coming right go down, down the racetrack. Hard hit. Caution is out. Come on down to pit road. We got some right rear or left rear damage, guys. And some left front and some right front. And now, who benefits by this caution with 30 laps to go? Anyone? And the lead lap here, guys. Do you steer and wheel straight? What, what McMurray and David Green, who right now is third and fourth, I talked to Ray Everham about this the other day. These tires do not like heat cycles, and that's what's going on here. You heat them up, they cool down. You heat them up, they cool down. I think these guys would rather see this race go ahead and run to the end under Green. You know, one of the things that I, I, can, I consider every time we talk about Cup and Bush cars and comparing them, these cars still have a big rear blade on them. They didn't get the aero package. Uh, they didn't get the aero reduction that Cup did. I think that makes these cars handle a little bit better. Two tough weeks in a row for Martin Truex, who had his first did not finish in 43 races at Bristol. I think they'll get back out and they will finish, but I don't think it's going to be very good. Yeah, I mean, even though he came into this race fifth in points, pretty much his only highlight has been that win at Mexico. Pretty hard lick. This right here is where it gets scary is all those cars coming at him, anticipating he's gonna go down the racetrack. Blake Feast has been released from the care center. Matt's with him. Oh, trouble, Jeff Gordon pounds the wall. And they're stacking up behind him. Yep. There's Ricky Rudd right in the wall. 42, 21 car got heavy damage. It looked like the car just got away from Gordon. I, I believe he was alone. As you look from Ricky Rudd's uh, onboard camera in the motorcraft car. I didn't like the way Jeff's car looked from the get-go. It just looked like it was not hooked up. Well, Darrell, in that last green flag run, in the first few laps, Gordon was running 2440s. At the end of that run, he'd fallen off more than a second, 2555s after just 20 laps. And now, She's, that car's got a lot of trouble. She's cool. Here, let's get it fixed. Okay. Oops. So I was mistaken. A little Oops. bit of help from the 20, Tony Stewart. Doesn't take much help at this place. From the Goodyear Bloom. That's where they were stacking up the, the chain reaction the, behind yeah, them. The nine got into the 21 and sent him in the fence. 42 bounced off of him and got into the nine. Self-cleaning. Here they come. All Down the, the hill. Not Casey Kane has just slammed the front straightaway wall. Came around coming off turn number four, and that will put us under caution at lap 285. It is the seventh caution flag of the day, and by about five laps, we are shy of green flag pit stops once again. He's been running really, really high, getting off a of turn four really, really high. Looks like the thing gets up here, and he just comes around with him. Does a pretty nice job, actually, of 
not crashing worse than he did. Darrell, he was well up on the straightaway yeah. off the it, corner. And then that's not unusual here, Larry. You get, just as you make that transition out of the corner up onto the straightaway, there is a uh, the car gets really light there, particularly if it's loose. Kane's misfortune is a benefit for Dale Jarrett, who will get back on the lead lap get the free pass. And as you mentioned, Mike, we were only about 10 or 12 laps away from those green flag stops. The other drivers at these caution. Tyler Walker in the 38 and David Green now coming back in the picture having slipped not just a couple of spots because Green was up among the top five at pit stops. Whoa, oh boy, Walker but gets Menard and around and Walker goes. Caution. Ouch. Yikes coming back down the hill. Whoa. That's when it gets real dangerous. Oh yeah, what goes up must come down. Now Second this, caution of the day. And this caution is the break that Boston Reed has been looking for in the five car. He'll finally get back on the lead lap. Early in a race like this, uh, you, you like to see a caution every 20, 30 laps so you can work on your car and make it better. Tyler Walker in the middle. Yeah, he, he, Tyler would have been well advised. See, he got a little shot there from uh, the 27 car. He'd been well advised to let those two guys race off in there, and he'd have woed up a little. And, you know, we talk about that three wide. This racetrack's 75 feet wide, but all it takes, remember, they're over 180 miles per hour. All it takes is one move like that, like you saw the 27 car make, and this is what happens. Carol, what I saw there was David Green get his left front tire down on the flat, which shot him up into Tyler Walk. He was trying to give Tyler room. Turn trouble, two, trouble. trouble. Boston Reed. Caution's out. Center pointer back in the right direction. Caution is out. Looks like he poked somebody with that right front. Yeah, but... You know what he got going, boss. I can't see down on the bottom. I don't think he hit the wall or anything. No, he didn't. Uh, he hit somebody, though. Four, let's catch back up. Let's catch back up. How many tires you got down? Six. You're going to have to make the call there. It definitely looks like the right front is down. Of course, they right have rear. an inner liner uh, that's a tire within a tire that keeps it up all the way being on the rim. One driver's misfortune is always someone else's opportunity. Randy LaJoy gets the free pass. And Kenny Wallace, I believe if I was him, Larry, I'd be coming back to pit road getting me some more tires. I believe I would. Here, we're riding with him in there in the 22 car. And remember, Boston Reed started the race by getting a penalty for jumping the start to the outside. Finally got back on the uh, lead lap. He was racing Tim Fidoa in the 12, and it might have been contact with Fidoa. Um, I got to believe by the way that right front fender is kind of all jacked up there that he got into somebody. Boy, if he if he did have contact, uh, maybe he did that when he come off that little bit of banking back there, Larry, and clipped it. Car just looked like it got awfully loose with him. I do know that. Whoa, here we go, coming around, 97 car, Kurt Busch. Slams the inside wall and just, just like last night, lap one, caution one, and the defending Nextel Cup champion is going to head for repairs after one lap. And remember, he comes in here second in the points. This is kind of what he has been struggling with this year, getting himself in wrecks like this. Uh, it happened to him at Bristol, happened to him at Martinsville, and here we are today. Left front's down, a lot of front end sheet metal damage. Right front askew and damage to Rusty's car as well. Let's find out why. He's down under Rusty here. Rusty's got the outside. Kurt gets up there. He's trying to stay off of Rusty, and the back end just got around on him. Three hey, cars in the wall. It's Michael Waltrip. He's gotten the thing up in the wall. What in the world? No caution yet. Hold it up. They're starting to really stack up behind him, though. He's trying to get to pit road. He could not make it to pit road, and there's the caution. A late yellow for Michael Waltrip on lap seven. I have no idea what happened. A lot of damage. Just remember the last All three right. races. Michael has outscored every other driver as far as points. Three consecutive top ten finishes. Oh, he 
he's had an ongoing set of incidents with Jeff Green, and there was contact between Green's number 43 and Michael's car. Both Owensboro native. Your 43 car. Trouble for Jeff Green. Now, in the lap one incident with Michael Waltrip, Green brings out the caution as he slows to under 100 miles an hour here. And when Jeff Green came in for repairs to the nose of his car, there was steam coming from the overflow at the base of the windshield, indicating potential uh, for radiator trouble. Not sure that's what's happened to him. No, I just saw a big cloud of smoke come out of it, like uh, engine smoke, but uh, not sure. Could have been tire smoke. She does put up a big fume of smokes here coming off down the front straightaway. Yikes. They'll do that when you get on that sideways. <laughs> that's just a uh, well, pretty good save job of saving it, really. All that is is a bunch of tire smoke. Daryl, I'm going to speculate here. Is it possibly uh, you qualified 20th in that car? Oh, Kenny. Hang on. The car just got loose. Hang on to it. Caution is out. Fun, boys. He's fun. 17 tags. It hit nothing. They're claiming contact. Get it running. Get it running. Caution's out. From Matt Kenson. Don't, don't kill the tires now. Hang on to it. Trying to get going before the leaders come around. Of course, the field is frozen once the caution is out. He just has to maintain caution speed. I think he may have killed those tires long before they told him not to. Now, Kenny uh, moonlights for Speed Channel and set a new record today, uh, interviewing himself for about 18 minutes on the air with John Roberts. Yeah, occasionally when the Kenny gets on air, a, a show will, Four tires. You know, a show will break out during his interview what happens to Kenny. I think he's all by himself. I don't see anybody touch him. No. Now that's that's one of those times, Larry, when the driver will swear the track moves. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that claim disproven, and Wallace falls victim to the lady in black, which already on lap one sent Kurt Busch to the garage for repairs, and on lap seven, Michael Waltrip with help from Jeff Green. Oh, boys, he's fun. 17 tags. He spun, but he didn't roll that day, and he was sitting in the grandstand. Crash on the speedway. Right there, right there. Jeff Green has spun at turn four. We've got Hermie Sadler, who made oh, what do you do? ball. But caution is out for the seventh time for the Cheerios Dodge. You know, I, I know somebody turned him around, and I, I wasn't really looking until after the fact. I'm not exactly sure who it was, but I think I know mentioned it, Mike, these guys, they've been like magnets the entire race. Opposite the track. Michael Waltrip into the back of Jeff Green. The reverse of what brought out the lap seven caution flag. And poor Kurt Busch. Almost again. Almost got it again. I think he got a, quite a bit of damage, Kurt Busch did. That's going into three. It's up in the middle of turn three and four. Onboard camera. More than likely, he ran up on the back of Kyle, got on the brakes, shot him in the wall. Take it easy, we got the wall, guys. Kyle's a jam car. Everybody's had trouble getting past him, and he's got a lot of left front damage from a shredded tire. You yeah, know, he, Leffler may have run up on the, Kyle may have been slowing, Leffler run up on the back of him and had to get on the brake, shot him into the wall. Kyle will make it to the pits, and we will stay green. Let's, let's show see, it to you one more time. See here. what happened here, because had to be a chain of events here. I think Kyle just abruptly slowed, and Leffler had nowhere to go, jammed on the brakes, and it got him in the fence his car on a Ray Everham, so I'm not surprised to see this Dodge, you know, being driven by Casey Kane running so well, but we got in trouble right now that's with his Jeremy teammate, Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield. He got into the wall. Yeah, like, May Mayfield just got up in the wall off turn four here and just used up the whole right side of his car. It's in under Blaney right here. Dave Blaney in the 07. Ah, they make a little contact, and it turns Jeremy into the fence. 
and Blaney is slow in the back straightaway as a result. Yeah, he's got damage to the left front. From Ricky Rudd. Darrell, I know you can get down on the apron here. Come on, come on, come on. Keep straight. No caution. Clear, clear. So y'all go ahead and race each other. Well, Merton's around. Oh, man, how'd he do that? I think he just turned it to the bottom. Too quick, coming off the corner. Caution is out. Go, 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 Martin will fall only to sixth place. He loses one position. Yeah, but he's probably going to have to pit. Look at Matt Warren. We talked about it a while ago. They did not want to see that caution. Four laps to go. Remember, we're guaranteed one shot at a green-white checkered. No question. Everyone will be to pit road for four tires. Now, this pit stop could win or lose this race. The lady no in black. JD, right front. Rick, left rear. No gas. Four tires only. The lady in black just gone, gone to her closet, got out a new outfit. You got it. Here we go. Yeah, she said, y'all think this is a yawner? Watch this. <laughs> I told you stick around would give you a good finish. And Mark gets down under, under the nine car. He tries to cut down off of turn four. She just won't stick. A lot of laps on the tires, not enough grip. But look what a job he did to keep it off the fence. And like you said, lost one spot. Now, there's a couple players here, buddy. That 16 can be fast, and we know that 48's fast. And he's sitting there. And the 15 was a little give and take there. And look what happened. Oh, trouble. Jason Leffler is around. Turn two. Caution is out. Fired up. Get going. We got spun there, boys. Got I think that happened because Michael got squeezed. Michael had to lift out of the gas. Chain reaction. Somebody got in the back of the 11. You can see the bumper bent in there right under the Fed. Darrell, I, I think even though we ran 12 laps, this will be a timely caution for some cars that were not driving very good. Like Sterling Marlin in the 40 car got in the back of yeah, Jason Yeah, so Leffler. did uh, Travis Quapel. He hit the outside wall there. Last night, the first caution at lap nine. Tonight, we got 12. Whoa, well, got a car around down here. Big break, bunch of good cars. Stewart is in it. Rusty Wallace is in it. Dave Blaney has part of it. Ricky Rudd is piled up against the inside wall. Schrader, and Schrader. Schrader in the 49. Now remember, that's the pack we just saw about two or three laps ago that was running in a big wad. There you see Rusty Wallace, third to points coming in this race. A lot of damage. Dave Blaney having a good run still on the lead lap. The Jack Daniels car in trouble. Schrader gets away with a lot of sheet metal damage and Wallace with just plain a lot of damage. Stewart, Tony Stewart's number 20 part of it. Rudd, Ricky Rudd in the 21 car. Tony Stewart there in the 20 car. See if we can figure out what happened here. Headed off into turn three. Whoa, it looks like Jimmy Johnson. I don't know, did he hit Tony? And Rusty Wallace, nowhere to go. Ricky Rudd, it just stacks up from there. At least a five car pileup. Right front of you, right front of you. Man, those are some hard hits right there. There may have been contact. If so, it was slight, but that's all it takes at the speed. Why, Jeff, we're under caution. The 41 car. 41 car, Casey Mears right there. All of a sudden, he comes down in his corner, and the right front car looks like it goes away. You see a little puff of smoke right there. Next thing you know, he is in the outside wall, Chris. So 89 laps to go on this caution. Yeah. They come here, they come here, they come. Looked oh. like Travis Quaffle in the 77 rolled out of the throttle. Mike Bliss in the zero got into the back of him. And of course, the chain reaction from there. Kenny Schrader in the 49. Scott Wimmer in the 22 having a good run. And, uh, and add Clint Boyer, a little bit of damage there. Yeah, he just bit, got back on the lead lap. He got through there without hurting his car, I think. Boyer did. He squeezes between the wall and. Yep, you're right there. Yeah. No damage. Let's ride with Kevin LePage, that white car. And the caution flag is out. And that is Curtis Davis. Right front fender is torn up. Is that before or after he hit? I didn't see him. Didn't see him hit. Let's see. Maybe we'll get the answer here. 
Wow, that Ooh. thing really took off. That looks like a tire went down. Ouch. Yeah, when a car turns like that, something broke or... Car in the wall. Blake Feast in the 5 and Jerry Robertson in the 78. And the caution flag is out. Now what do you do, Alan? Yeah. He can't come in and put tires on. By the way, how long since Kenny Wallace won a race? How about that? It's November 2001. He's hungry. Yep. Fourth caution of the race, Blake Feast in the uh, Hendrick Motorsports 5. One of their development drivers and second uh, incident of the day for Jerry Robertson in the 78. can't tell from that angle. They were two cars very close. I think uh, Blake kind of got left reared here. No, it looks like Robertson lost it. Well, he got left reared, but he lost it. Saved it. Well, Blake had a lot to do with the saving it. Briggs got a car in the wall, turn three, Johnny Sauter. Yep, Sauter and Stacey Compton got together coming off of turn two. I was watching out of my third eye. And uh, he cut his right front because of that contact. And the caution is out. You know, you can only use that right front to push so much. Yeah, you see it tore right up. Yeah. Unless that started earlier than that. I only caught it coming out of two. Right here is where I saw it. Yeah, okay. That'll do it, right there. Well, let's see. Don't we've got anything left. Oh, we have just one bit of advice. Don't turn right anywhere here. That's a mistake. <laughs> Speaking of turning right, Scott Riggs. Oh, I thought he was going to keep it out of the wall, but it slid right down into that inside wall. And the Valvoline Chevy gets its nose broken. And, Darrell, that was just such a long, lazy slide. Yeah, I even had time to hit my talk back and not holler. <laughs> Which gets a big laugh from our production truck. Yeah, normally I'd be saying, spin, 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 right here, spin. And see how long it took, so. Could you see the car just broke loose with him right there as he was to come up out of the hole off turn two. Now look at it blow that tear off off the windshield. Uh, air doing crazy things over these race cars when they go around like that. Just see the flaps. Kisses the inside. See the flaps come up. See the tear off on top of the car there. Or no, that's just smoke, a haze of smoke going over that little rail right there. Tells you a lot about flaps, including a pit stop. Oh, that will oh, oh, trouble. There you oh. go. Turn three, two today for Jason Leffler. She just started wobbling with him getting down into three, and he couldn't catch it. So this would be the third of Joe Gibbs' car. Yeah, That has been torn up today, too, by Jason Leffler, the 11 team, and then uh, Bobby Labonte, the 18 car. Well, now, you know, like old Curly said, they ain't over with yet. He did take the green flag, so that is his qualifying attempt. Got loose, getting in a corner. You could see it there, too. He was up there pretty high. He had that kind of high, wide, and handsome arc it out there late and run it down the hill look, and uh, that hadn't been that successful lately. It just bent both both ends of that car. Oh, he hits it pretty hard. I mean, he's still going hard, right? That's at 190 miles an hour thereabouts. Yeah, we've seen it close to 195. Next stop, Ralph. Uh, I talked to crew chief Bono Mannion for Martin Truex. Oh, trouble just in front of the leaders. Look out. Boyer snuck through. Paul Wolf in the 40 got turned around along with Boston Reed in that pack of cars. Leader Clint Boyer was trying to negotiate through. We talked about patience. Yep. And but you've got the leader bearing down on you. You've got to go. And if someone's holding you up, you just simply got to try to move them out of the way or whatever it takes to get by. Goes Boston Reed, the 57 Lowe's car. Hendrick Motorsports entry, second caution of this race is out, just past the halfway point. And Paul Wolf has the 40 car going again as well. Well, well right tire is flat. And he's going to drive all the way around on that. I hope he doesn't tear up the fender. 
Wolf's going to lose a lap while he was sitting uh, sideways on the racetrack. Uh, he's got a lot more damage than just that left front uh, tire flat, huh? Yeah, the left rear quarter panel is knocked in against the tire. They have a hard time getting the jack under this part to change the left side tires. It's so low. 103 laps, Benny. Going to see any of these leaders pit and make their last stop of the race? Well, we could. I'm thinking somebody will, but I don't think a lot of the front runners are going to here. Certainly could be wrong, but I mean, they only pitted, uh, what, lap uh, 50, 53, and a lot of those laps between here and there were run under the caution flag. Let's see if we can see what happened to the 40 car. Here we see Borey, the leader of the in the two, and there we see Brent Sherman in the 10 gets into Boston Reed. They've checked up because of Paul Wolf and the 40 having spun and backed in the wall. They get that right front fender on the two car a little bit. Did Sherman, when the 10 car spun, did he get that fender? Yeah, look at this. Is there some damage there? Well, no, let's see. So this is, I guess he did. There seemed to be some contact between the two. Yeah, let's check this out. All right, they turn, the 10 car turns sideways in front of him and sure looks like, yes, there is contact between the 10 and 2. Ralph? Well, that is definitely something they are talking three, three car. Tony Stewart is trying to get on the inside of Boston Reed in 57. Makes contact and Tony down through the mud, the water. Ugh. Spins around right in front of the field almost. But luckily, no one ran into him. I wonder if Tony got a bath inside that car as Stacy Compton goes by in 59. Hey, he used to run. Not trouble. Short, not trouble. Tracy Hines. Mm. That's turn four. Caution flags out. We were about to say that Martin Truex was getting into some heavy race traffic, but just as he caught the big pack of traffic, the pace car is going to pick him up and let that traffic go back around. So it looks like the, the last 20 or 25 laps of this race, the track will be pretty clean in front of the leader, Martin Truex Jr. That's tough for Tracy Hines. He was having a good night. He sure is. Yeah. Just bragging on him a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Well, just 25 laps to go. Don't think we'll see any of the leaders pit here. Don't see a lot of damage on the six car. Yeah. Well, the leader, well, pit road is not open yet, so we don't know from who is going to pit. But I, I just can't imagine track position being what it is. I cannot imagine these cars up front pitting. Now, got 26 cars on the lead lap. I, you know, maybe some of the guys toward the back of the lead lap will come in and throw in one more set of tires that they do have available to them. But there's no way. Truex is going to stop. A little wrinkle there, just over the top of the tire. Yeah, I'm not even sure he's going to pit. Well, if I spun around and had to lock the brakes up, I might want a fresh set of tires. Let's see what happens. Uh oh! Oh wow! He goes. End up hitting under that caution. That's because he was a last. Oh, big trouble. Turn two. Cars around in smoke. Tony Stewart has gone for the daily double. Hmm. Got Tim Sauter around in the uh, 56 car. Boston Reed in the 57. The uh, 52 car. That's uh, Doug Halsell. Tim Sauter got some pretty doggone good damage in the back of that car. Yes, sir. Well, the left rear tire is gone. Man. Someone must have knocked that tire off the rim. Oh, and Carl Edwards got a piece of it. Carl Edwards made a pit stop. Running ninth, decided to come in and change tires on that caution flag. Why did he do that, Ralph? Do you know? 
Well, Benny, the bigger story with the 60 actually is that he's not feeling all that well. He has already told the crew he wants a golf cart brought around so that as soon as this race is over, he wants out of here to get back and get himself situated and ready to go for tomorrow. They have been working on that car. They have taken a half round out of the right rear and they put four tires of fuel on it. But right now, the bigger issue with Carl Edwards, he's a little under the weather. Well, he's got another issue. He's torn up the race car pretty badly, Ralph. Yeah, we need to do some work on that. Right front tire looks to be flat. Let's see. See, oh. the 56 car goes up and just runs in the back of Tony Stewart. And this Carl Edwards that knocked the left rear tire off of Tim Sauter's car. Trouble, car on the wall, turn four, Tyler Walker. Man, what a day it's been for this team. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the frustration there, chucking that steering wheel up onto the dashboard. That's too bad. Engine failure on their second lap of qualifying earlier today, and the crew thrashed around to get that thing installed, rolled the car out onto the grid while they were singing the national anthem. That's how close they cut it to being able to get into the race. And, and uh, for Tyler, uh, his night comes to an end in a way he did not hope for. That's pretty hard hit too. Looks like it. Looks like a lot of damage to that right front fender. So we're going to have a little overtime, BP. A little tender walking away there too. Sure looks that way. and be pretty good at this racetrack. We got a spin on the racetrack. Casey Kingsland, the 24 truck, he had quite a bit of trouble in practice yesterday. They had a two hour and 15 minute practice. I think he spun out three or four times in that practice session. And this is one of the guys that was guaranteed a spot in the race off of 2004 owner points. And you under, you ask yourself, why would a truck that's slow like that be guaranteed a spot in the race? These guys pulled up and down the road all over our country last year, taking that truck to truck races. They earned the right to be in this race here. They were in the top 30 in points, and that's why he's out there. Now, when we switch to 2005, the leaders kind of got tight. You know, there's our leader, Ricky Craven, Bobby Labonte right in his rear bumper. Out. Yellow, yellow, got yellow. Trouble. Going sideways while the track yellow is out. Problems again with the 24. That's Casey Kingsland spinning around, bringing out our fifth caution of the day. Now, Phil, we've run 59 laps, but I would venture to guess half of them have been under caution. What do you do if you're if you're a crew chief? Do you bring them to pit road and get new tires, or you stay out? I think if you need an adjustment, I think you want to come in now. This may be 10 or 20 laps earlier than you would like for it to be, but I think if you want to need it, make an adjustment, obviously Terry Cook, I think, is going to come to pit road because he needs to make some adjustments to his Power Stroke diesel truck. But I think some of the guys up. And our third caution being brought out, or third caution for the 24 of Kingsland being brought out. This is the sixth caution of the day now. Is this uh, three strikes you're out? Well, I'm not situation. sure, but baseball, they do that. Well, he was kinda, he's kind of slow, so they might do him a favor by him. telling him to take a break. Look at Bobby Labonte. He got a little bit of damage on that right rear feel. You can see right there. Right there. I like that machine. Tires here put around a wedge in the left rear. Randy Goss talking about making his pit stop, putting around a wedge in the left rear. He's just a little bit too loose. Now that's somebody running into the back of Bobby Labonte. He can't inflict that on himself. He uh, he shot down there where the 24 truck had spun out. He was lapping trucks. It was a, a very big glob of trucks converging on where the 24 was. Somebody got in the back of him. That's what I saw. That was looking back at Jack Sprague. Take a look now at why we are under our sixth caution of the day. Three wide. David Starr was in the middle. Terry Cook on the outside. The 24 truck on the inside. Here comes the leader. Look at there. Had to jump the curb. It looked like maybe the 22 truck was the closest to him. Maybe Bill Lester made a slight bit of contact, but certainly nothing. No fault of Bill Lester's. I mean, they're all trying to get seized up and try to find a way around this 24 truck. It was behind the wall in the garage here. He's back. Robert Presley gets nerfed a little bit. Oh. Bobbert gets turned around. He couldn't quite hang on to his. He got a little shot in the side from Huffman there. Didn't really see what 
led up to it. The sensor is back on the racetrack. Sorry, Rick. Other than they were racing for the curb, Bill. They were. They were both racing for the curb. Racing for the curb. Take a look at why the eighth caution of the day has come out on lap 141. It's a little, a little bit after the fact there. They, they made contact prior to this view. Ah, here we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, just a good old-fashioned race for the curb. Yeah, Robert on the inside of the racetrack. Robert came down. Robert Huffman on the inside of the racetrack. Robert Presley came down, and they made a little contact. That was a battle for the third position. And if you remember two years ago at this racetrack, Carl Edwards was a rookie, and they're serious about that spot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Whoa, Bobby goes. Hamilton's about to get turned around, and he does. Bobby Hamilton spun around. He tries to keep the truck going, tries to stay green, but no, it doesn't. And they've got damage to the front of that truck. They're going to have to do a lot of work to get him back out and keep a respectable position. Bobby will have to make his way to pit road here. We've got 21 trucks on the lead lap. Wow, Todd Bodine was the beneficiary of all that beating and banging on those fresher tires. He's all the way up to the seventh spot. And now under 10 laps of racing to go, it will be a single file restart. We won't have any lap trucks on the inside. Bobby Labonte will make, or Bobby Hamilton will make his way onto the pit road where Bobby Labonte now has smooth sailing out in front of him, but he's got everything he would ever not want right behind him in Ricky Craven. He's got a day's work left to do. Let's see what happens here. I saw Huffman and, and uh, Bobby Hamilton truck to get together. I don't know what precipitated it. See, Bobby, he ran into the back of Terry Cook, pushed him to the through the corner. They're trying to lap, get by the lap truck. Then Bobby kind of turned back to the inside. Robert Huffman was there. They made contact. That's what turned Bobby Hamilton around. See if we can take another look at what happened from another angle. See Bobby there. Now Robert and Bobby are going to make some contact right there. Just a slight bit of contact, but it was enough to get him sideways. And then he had Robert Huffman had Mike Skinner right behind him, and he went ahead and pushed Bobby Hamilton around. Had he had backed off, possibly Rod and Bobby Hamilton could have straightened it out, but uh, unfortunately it didn't happen. Right? Change anywhere with a lot of little things. So um, really, I'm, I'm happy with, with our effort there. You're going to call Rusty and let him know that? Um, I think he just had a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds that way. Oh, dear. We'll go back upstairs, Steve. We What's sure happened? did, Dick. That's Damon Lusk in the 85. Snap hooked it around, and Larry, you, you've said it several times already today. There's just no margin for error. There really isn't. Now, he was on his second lap, and he knew he had to step it up because his first lap was only 30-51, and he pretty much is a go or go home car now we're going to see right here in the middle of turn three and four you can see the car start to wash up the racetrack and just got loose he was in the throttle area tried to correct it and it went back the other way and hits the outside wall here so that definitely will be one of the cars that probably uh, along with all the damage that will not make this show this afternoon this comes around with you so quick but you're carrying so much speed i mean they're averaging over 160 miles per hour and that's average speed and you'd hear the drivers talk about this every week. It amazes me, Larry. Trouble on the backstretch. Ooh. Brian Sockwell in the 88. And he had just left pit road, getting up to speed, going down the backstretch. Had to have just barely been into uh, the first gear. A lot of damage on that car. Well, he devastated that race car. He has dropped the window net, which is a signal the crews and everybody else to the NASCAR control tower that he's okay but that race car is not and he was one of the go or go home cars so it appears let's see what maybe happened here the speed channel reviewing what happened to Damon Lusk and I do not know what happened going through turn race. two getting up to high gear all the way up on the straightaway not sure about that. That car that turned to the right. Yeah, Larry. it's like it made a little turn to the left and then hard turn to the right. He was in the middle of the straightaway. There was no abrupt turn in either direction. Yep. Sockwell trying to make he his radio. We had a crash on the speedway. Yeah, Dick, right off of turn four, David Stremme is involved. Tony Raines went through the grass in the 33. Paul, Wool or, uh, excuse me, Casey Kane in the six. Aaron Fike in the 66 car. Caution is out for the fourth time. A lot of damage to the 66. Front and rear to, on that car. Aaron Fike making his first start of the year in the 66 car. This is a car that Greg Biffle 
uh, drives at a lot of the uh, companion events. Let's take a look at what happened, Larry McReynolds. Here on lap 107, the restart had just taken place. See Aaron Fike in the 66 car on the bottom of the racetrack. Car wiggled with him, went up the racetrack right into the side of Davis Trimmy, the 14, and it's a chain reaction from there. John Wood had some damage to the right front corner of his race car on the 47. I saw our points leader, Carl Edwards, once again barely <laughs> getting by down through the grass in the 60 car. There's another look. And, and I know David Streaming in the 14, I'm sure he will be upset, but as you could see, Aaron Fike, just when he got in the cars, in the throttle, his car wiggled and up the racetrack it went. Caution for the fifth time today. Tough, tough break for teammates. Tim Fidoa in the 12 and David Streaming in the 14. All right, what we're going to see, you see David Streaming on the bottom, back in the throttle. Car wiggles right here. He corrects it and gets into the left rear of Tim Fidel. It's basically the same thing that happened to Strimmy while ago when Aaron Fike in the 66 car wiggled and jumped up the racetrack coming off turn four. And once again, Carl Edwards' big adventure continues in the 60 car. He just barely gets by. Now you see right there, each car wiggled, he corrected it, and it gets in the, to the side of his teammate, Tim Fedewa. So not a good day. For nice him. job not to overcorrect in that race car. Oh, we got trouble right here. Stan Barrett in the 36 car. Hard licking the inside wall. The caution will be out. Also, Boston the five car, Boston Reed in trouble. Caution out for the seventh time on lap 151. Stanton Barrett there in the 36. A lot of damage to his race car. Now, both of these cars were one or more laps down. That will be a huge break, though, for Tony Raines in the 33 car. He will get the free pass. Now, Steve Burns, I would say that we may see a lot of these cars come to pit road because they could make it to the end here without stopping again. Yeah, we're at lap 151, 74 laps to go. We'll run some laps under caution, so that'll save those teams some fuel. And so we might be seeing the last pit stop of the day. Of course, that would mean it would have to It's over coming off turn two. Looked like the five just washed up into the 36 car, Stanton Barrett. Boston Reed in the five. And of course, both of them end up in trouble. Stanton Barrett, you'll see this is a hard lick into that inside wall mm. with the right front, right rear. Hendrick team's got something else in mind. Those two guys, the 24 car. Oh, John Paul, the J.J. Ailey is around into the wall. A lot of traffic behind him. Guys diving for pit road. Caution is out. Not a surprise to see this. I mean, just uh, because this racetrack is so slippery right now because of the heat just pounding on it all day, bringing the oils out, the air pressures aren't up. And this is a very inexperienced driver, and we see some damage to this FedEx car on the left rear. He will probably be able to continue, but at a reduced speed. J.J. Yaley in that car here. Terry labani has been in it the last couple of weeks, but Yaley uh, getting the opportunity here. He's supposed to run this car a couple of times in 2005. Watch the... Uh Right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's all by himself, really. I mean, he started getting the car loose, and then I wasn't sure who that was right up behind him, but that didn't help when that car came up behind him on that uh, rear bumper. That was Casey Kane in the nine car, the squeeze by on the outside. On board with J.J. He already mentioned he was sideways. I believe he was already telling his team how loose that car was, and then he spun it. That is oh, Carl Edwards, leader. the race leader, has no. just spun. Come on, baby. Hold on, hold on there. Wow, it did not hit the wall. That, lock it down, lock it down. That's real important. His left rear is flat, but I'll tell you what, he okay. not hit the wall, BP. He may be able to get away with one. Oh, I'm telling you, that's unbelievable. The caution is out. Get on the racetrack. Come on, Carl. No, no, no. You need to come into pits and that's get that right. tire get changed. Get that tire changed. You pull it. Right. That a boy, bro. Good move. He is coming down pit road. Oh, I don't think we hit anything. Oh, we're fine. Just got a flat left side or something. Flat left rear. <laughs> Let's see what we can see. Control the reason for sanity there. Yep. Left rear is flat. 
boy, he did a good job keeping up that wall. And if he's a little bit lucky, that could too, because. Oh, it looked man. like right there he's going to hit the wall with the nose and somehow kept it off. He's still got a real. Like a Sherman tank, and there's a spin. Uh, Kurt Busch off of four in the grass along the front stretch. And that's two of the Roush cars that have spun tonight. Carl Edwards in the 99 and now Kurt Busch in the 97. Go all the way around and haven't hit anything yet. Right front is flat. Now, I don't know if that happened after the spin or not, but it's flat right now. Caution obviously is out. Rusty Wallace will be the lucky dog. So that time we got through the field before the caution came out. Let's take a look. Mark, pull up again to look at that left front. Let's see if we can just see very top of the screen up here. The 97 cars will come off the racetrack and around he goes. Well, he, was, he was driving that thing, wasn't he? he down was. in the grass. He was turning that wheel. Okay, put it in gear and drive away. Joe Nemechek from 17th to 12th. Now there's trouble. PJ. Yep. PJ Jones, not in a good spot. Full course caution for PJ Jones in the interloop. That's a little bit of an uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> I would think so. Okay. All right, I see people coming in in the future. Will they come in under the yellow? Probably will. Get tires, yeah. fuel. Just 10 laps in. I mean, these pit stops now are not really important as that last pit stop. You see what happened to P.J. Jones. On board with Boris Sad. I think I know what's going to happen. And Boris goes around. So both those guys have damage now on their cars. P.J.'s got left front damage, and it looks like Boris probably does as well. <laughs> That's who's got a spin on the race track. Dale Jarrett is in the wall. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's on the outside of the uh, the carousel down there. Has some damage to the right rear, and he there's a the leader, Robbie Gordon. You're all clear, but get going right here. Robbie Gordon just went by I as the leader. Like we got damage to the right rear corner, so let's get it beat out, get the tires on it, okay? Full course yellow. Sorry, BP. Go ahead. That might put the 88 car lap down. We'll I see. think they got more problems than just yeah, that's being right. a lap down. Well, no, no. Yeah, they got to put the fuel in back there, don't you? In the yeah. right rear. Somehow. Well, yeah, they're supposed to be. <laughs> yes, cool exactly there. right. So let's see if we can figure out what happened to Dale Jarrett here. He's got a mark on his bumper. Yep. Uh -huh. Got another mark on his bumper. It's like Junior gets in the back of 88 down in the carousel. Junior had fresh time. Well, 88. Junior, it's Burton and the full course caution. We'll be all right. What we got to have? Oh New front clip. Yeah, I don't think they're going to fix that car, be able to fix this car and get him back on the race. Like yeah, yeah. Alan? Well, I just got finished talking with his crew chief, Kevin Hamlin, Bill. They had stopped at lap 15. He said, we are good to the finish on one more stop. He had just gotten off the radio to Jeff saying, you're really good. Your lap times are solid. Take care of your stuff. As you guys were saying, the 31's in the wall, and Jeff came back with the radio transmission you heard. I don't know what happened, but sometimes when you get up on those rumble strips down there in turn one, you gotta jump on the gas the same time, and it just turns the car sideways. What a priceless shot that was. Just holding his head. What have I done? That's heartbreaking. Had a good run going yesterday. High hopes for today. Kevin Harvick talked about it yesterday. This team has had no luck this season. Let's see if we can see what happened. Jeff's okay. He's going to climb out. Well, here you see him coming. Oh, he's already loose down into the corner. Then he gets up on the rumble strips. And he's actually trying to gas it, trying to save it. Oh, boy. That's a hard hit. Mm, that was a hard hit. 
uh, I believe it was Reed Sorensen, but it was one of the guys in the Bush test came up here and did the same thing. They got over that new curbing over there. A halfway mark after an early start for Ray. Now there's oh, on the track. P.J. Jones. Wow, look at He got every piece of that car except for the left for a corner. And that is a brake, a piece of brake rotor. Brake rope. You said brakes? Something happened with the brakes? Made, the rotor may explode Full course? Cor caution, excuse me. No, the brakes. I lost the brakes. They broke. I turned it into the outside wall. See, that's what happened to Matt Kenseth. There it is. Broken rotor. Yeah. That's what happened to Kenseth at, at I think, at Indy. It was a brake rotor exploded. And he turned it into the wall to slow the car down because now that there's pavement down there at the end of that turn one, it's not like going through the gravel at 140 miles per hour to slow the car down. There's nothing to slow the car down. So he turned it into the wall to scrub off some speed, which was a smart thing to do. There we see brake rotor pieces. You're right. The rotor is broken. Pieces are flying around before he ever gets to the wall. Yeah, as soon as he hit the brakes, he was at the braking point. So as soon as he hit the brakes, that thing exploded. I'm not sure he turned in the wall or got turned in the wall. Behind him, Scott Pruitt, the road course racer, trying to catch him, but there's caution on the racetrack with Michael Waltrip. Wow, that's a strange place to crash, too. That's right there in the, uh, right before the interlude. I wonder if he got turned back there. Well, you're hustling right there, aren't you? Yeah, you're. Yeah, fine. But uh, Michael is fine. But he knows that he has a lot of damage to the Napa Chevrolet, and he's yes. taking everything off. Well, let's see. They, you know, they're in a pack here. And, yep, he gets turned by uh, Casey Kane. That is a wild ride. Wow, that's a hit. Take a ride with Michael yeah, as want, this happens. You want to go road course racing at the Glen? All these guys were bunched up, but it just doesn't take much. There he goes on to the back straight away, just minding his own business. And not much you can do when somebody picks up the rear wheels off your race car. Let me know if you're okay, Mike. Going into overtime. Wow. What will that do to fuel mods these guys? And here in? we have people in the wow. sand trap. And that one of them is Kurt Busch. Yep. And the 50 car, Jorge Getters. Right. You're not getting out of there without some help. That's up in now turns that, between turn that, six and seven. Now that looks like Snyder. His well, when they push, well, yeah. Bill, when they push Bobby Labonte right by me, a huge puddle of oil as he went by. Clearly an engine failure for him, but perhaps some oil on the racetrack that that's what made these guys wreck. Wow. Watch at the top of your screen. Was just no, that was Ron contact. Fellows making yeah. contact, and that's not in point six and seven. That's up in the interlude. Interlude, and Bush just drove straight in. I think he was trying to avoid the other cars sliding across, and that's about the only thing 